Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of In the Studio, entitled The Invisible Man. Uh, I'm your host this week, Alex Silva, and my guest today is Kareem Daniels, an artist and uh, many other things, but Kareem, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm uh, Kareem Daniels. I'm from a small town in North Carolina. Actually, it was an old tobacco plantation. Wow called uh, Grimesland, and uh, the reason I know it was a tobacco plantation was because they had a sign that reminded us. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> um, but um, I was a, a foster kid. Uh, I grew up with six different foster families. Uh, wow. Uh, which was partly the impetus for the project was me trying to pay homage to my different fathers. So. Okay, uh, tell us a little bit. The Invisible Man is part of the title of an art project that you're going to be debuting at the Brick House Art Gallery in Sacramento. Yeah, so, so. the uh, it's a, a photo exhibition, and I don't want to call it a documentary because it's not kind of documentary quality yet, mm -hmm. uh, but it's called The Invisible Man Reclaiming the Image of the Black Father. Uh, so part of the project is, again, to pay homage to those guys and also to... Uh, Talk about the fact that black fathers do exist, uh, even though you know the the narrative is that they don't. Right, and that's you, when you the title is reclaiming. Reclaiming. Right, yeah. because in the media, of course, there's been all sorts of uh, stories about the absence of the black. The absence father. of the black father, I mean, but nobody ever talks about. That's not really the true. Fathers that are there, yeah. Right. So what besides uh, how going through six foster home or families? Um, was there any other thing that kind of triggered? I mean, obviously, you've been working on this project for, what, about a year now, yeah. you said? So what was it that sort of decided now's the time to do this? Well, one of the other things was I was talking to, uh, I was talking to my nephew on the phone. And at the time, I was trying to decide. Uh, I like to reinvent myself and try new things. Uh, so um, I've done comedy. I, I do poetry. Um, I've done a Vipassana, which is like a 10-day silent meditation retreat. So I've mm -hmm. done a bunch of different things. And photography has al always been an interest. And then um, Tony Harvey from the uh, Sacramento Observer told me to stop playing and go ahead and get a camera. So I, I bought a camera. And then um, I was talking to my nephew, and we were talking about his kids. And he was telling me about a story about being at the mall. And he saw a younger black male, black man with his daughter and he had the, you know, he went up to him and was like, you know, keep up the good work. And so that was the, like the impetus. And it was like, oh, okay, that's what we're going to do. So. And originally it started just as a photo exhibition or do you always plan to do interviews? Because I know. Uh, originally it started as photos, but I wanted to do interviews because I wanted to give them a voice because nobody actually gets to hear uh, that voice. You know, mm -hmm. you have a, you'll have one or two people on television occasionally, but. Uh, I wanted to give you know regular guys a voice, chance to speak for themselves. Chance to speak for themselves, yeah. So, what will people be seeing at this uh, exhibit? And then I'll mention uh, when it opens and so forth. But. So, um, the way the exhibit is established, I actually start from uh, fathers who have infant children, mm -hmm. and go all the way through um, generations. Ah. So, um, as you. Go work from one room into the room to the other. Like I said, you start with infants. You'll see uh, fathers doing things with their kids uh, from toddler to teens uh, through college graduations. And then um, the last uh, set of photos on the exhibit is a family that goes from uh, a father to his grandchildren Feels or great-grandchildren. Great and the exhibit, you've also incorporated the video interviews? The video interviews. Well. So I've interviewed... Uh, about 10 people. Uh, so I've uh, interviewed uh, comedian Vince Morris, who's been like on Showtime, uh, HBO. He's been on Comedy Central, BET. Um, I also, uh, since uh, the last time I talked to you, I interviewed Steph Sanders, who uh, used to do comedy with uh, Patrice O'Neill. Mm -hmm. uh, Trenton Davis, who won the N NBC standoff, uh, comedy standoff. But I didn't I did interview more than comedians. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I interviewed one gentleman who's uh, three, uh, he's had uh, three sets of kids, so, uh, which kind of sounds bad, but it's not really. He mm -hmm. was, uh, he adopted a kid at, in his 20s oh. uh, because the child's parents told, he was a, the child's uh, basketball coach. 
and the, the parents told him that he wouldn't make it if he didn't take him with him. So, oh, wow. And so uh, he did that, then he was married, and um, ended up, he getting divorced, but he ended up raising his sons from that marriage, and then mm -hmm. uh, he has two younger sons now, so. From another. From another, yeah, yeah. but uh, he talks about how he's learned through each level of, you know, children. And then um, I interviewed, uh, I tried to interview one of my friends who has a disabled uh, child, but we could never kind of make that work. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I did interview Steph, and he talked about, you know, uh, his, he works in education, but he talked about raising um, gay children. Mm -hmm. And then he has a son that passed uh, this past year, so he talked about that. Uh, which was really uh, interesting because he talked he talked about the fact that they got a chance to say goodbye because his son had a terminal illness. So, um, so that was really interesting. It was r really insightful. Uh, what is the uh, sort of the most surprising thing that you learned in this process? I mean, obviously, you got exposed to a huge diversity of experiences. Well, it's interesting because you can get men to talk about anything but themselves. <laughs> so, you know, they'll, we'll talk about basketball, we'll talk about women, we'll talk about uh, just anything but yourself. So to get them to actually open up uh, became interesting. Uh, and then there were people that I couldn't get because they weren't. They just wouldn't. They just, they just wouldn't. And I think that was part of what happened with Mark. Uh, but, uh, but one of the things I got from him was he was like, uh, you know, his, his son became disabled in his, as a teenager. So he was like, you know, in, in the stereotype that black men run at the sign of trouble. And he was like, it's my son. What am I supposed to do? Right. I'm supposed to take care of him. Like, I can't throw him away. Like, wouldn't want to throw him away because that's my son. Right. So that was really. And did you come across any challenges besides the difficulty in getting the interviews that were surprising or something that was difficult? Um, or did it, it all go pretty smoothly? Mostly the the. the Getting the interviews was, were tougher than getting the pictures. Almost everybody agreed to the, the pictures. Right. Uh, there were a couple of people that did, wouldn't let me take their picture. And then um, there was actually one lady who, once I told her what I was doing, mm -hmm. I had taken a family photo of them. Uh, but once I told her what I was doing, she actually asked me to take a picture of her uh, daughters with their father. Ah, oh, uh, as a separate. As a separate thing. That's very nice. Uh, um, so in talking to all these fathers and interviewing, I'm sure they gave all sorts of advice and uh, knowledge and wisdom. Was there anything that stood out? Um, there were two, Trenton, Trenton uh, when I interviewed Trenton, one of the things that he said was uh, he's learned a lot of patience. And then the fact of uh, loving somebody else or uh, putting somebody else first all the time was a thing that made him grow a lot as a person. Uh, and one of the things he said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing was, he said as a father, it's his job to make sure that she realizes her purpose in being here in a shorter amount of time than it took him to do it. Right, to uh, help yeah, her along. To help her along. And then uh, another gentleman, um, an older gentleman, he was saying that his father used to ask him uh, to do the brakes on the car you know, like do stuff like that. And he was like, he didn't want to do it because it was work. <laughs> but later on, he realized that his father was asking him to spend time. Uh, uh, and he didn't know how to do that. So he would say, let's do the breaks. And he said, had he explained to him that he wanted to spend time, then he would have been more than happy to do the breaks. So over the years, you found that the older fathers sort of gained wisdom that they wanted to apply to the next generation. Right. And then realized, and do you think that this is, uh, I don't know if you talk to older or younger, but do you think generationally things are changing? And Well, so I, so I talked to everybody from somebody who's in their 70s all the way to uh, people in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that I realized is that some guys realize, learn from the mistakes of their fathers and they wanted to, uh, to be a different fathers because of that. Um, some guys, uh, one younger guy that I interviewed, he 
in him being a father, he understood that his father didn't have the tools to be the father that he thought he should be. And so, uh, so that's the thing that's changed. So there's a lot of forgiveness in, in that aspect. And then um, just a lot of guys are just like they're just either they're trying to be the father that their father was or they're trying to be the father that their father wasn't. I see. Yeah. So it helps you getting a lot of sort of healing, almost like back healing, not just with the younger generation that's being raised, but better relationships with the fathers, the fathers and grandfathers. That, grandfathers, yeah, because now they have a, a understanding. That, that level of wisdom. That, that level comes. of wisdom that comes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, let's uh, talk a little bit. So the exhibit is at the Brick House Art Gallery in Sacramento. Yes. And uh, when it starts on? It opens on May 31st uh, at 6 p.m. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have uh, DJ Mike Brim and DJ Master Dragon. I also included, uh, who are also included in the, f in the video, uh, in yeah, the, the photos, yeah. because uh, Master Dragon isn't Mike's sons, but he's one of his mentees. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to include the uh, guys who were mentors as well, because that's a part of uh, another w aspect of fatherhood in, our, in the black community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you end up with a lot of coaches and whatnot who step in where there are absentee fathers and do things with the kids then. Uh, in the in those places, so um, so it's a community parenting. So it's a community parenting. So it's being raised by the village, which was, was what I was, what, what happened with me. So, and would you mind talking a little bit about that? I mean, how 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 is it that you wind up with six different? So um, my mother left when I was six days old, um, and uh, she left me with my grandmother. My grandmother was an alcoholic, and so her niece actually took me from her. And so part of it was uh, they were older, so you know people would die, and I would end up living with other people. Uh, and then um, when I got to be a teenager, um, one of my friend's parents saw me making the trek back and forth to my grandmother's house because uh, she didn't necessarily take care. I kind of took care of her as mm -hmm. much as anything. Uh, so they saw me doing that, and so they decided that they wanted to take me in. And so he, um, uh, that family, his, the father's name was Buddy. We call him Buddy. Uh, he's about 6'3", about 250. Uh, <laughs> A big taught, guy. Big guy, <laughs> yeah. But he taught himself, he didn't finish high school, but he taught himself math enough to learn how to work on the equipment at uh, Fieldcrest. And he became like their, the, their maintenance person for all of their factories. You know, like he was the guy that they called to come in if they needed something. And he worked in the graveyard shift. And so um, I was involved in a lot of things in school, and he would come pick me up from school, take me to whatever I needed to do. Like I was on the superintendent advisory council. He would come pick me up from school, take me to that, sleep in the car until I finished, and then, you know, bring me so home. So even though he had a busy life, he was dedicated to helping you out. Yeah. And then um, and he ended up, you know, when he married mom, he, she had two kids, so he raised her two kids as his own. They had kids after that. He raised them. He helped her sister uh, with everything that she needed to help raise um, her sister's son. So, you know, those, but those are the things that happen. Those are the stories that never get right. told. And that you wanted to, and that to I bring wanted out. To bring out, yeah. To bring out. All right, well, the, the exhibit's called The Invisible Man Reclaiming the Image of the Black Father, correct? Yes. Uh, the artist is Kareem Daniels, and it'll be at the Brick House Art Gallery in Sacramento starting May 31st. And you said it runs to June 29th. June 29th. So, and you'll be able to meet Kareem, correct? At the, you'll be able at the to reception? meet me at the reception. <laughs> uh, uh, June 20th, I'm doing a, a panel discussion uh, with wow. Black Fathers, okay. uh, and uh, Terry Moore, who runs Fathers and Families in Sacramento, which is a group that helps. Uh, fathers with uh, parenting classes and helps mm -hmm. them through the court process. Uh, he'll be on the panel, Steph Sanders, who the comedian I spoke of, he'll and be on that it. Be? And that'll be at the Brick House on As well. June 20th at 7, 8 p.m. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kareem. Well, it was a pleasure. You, and uh, check out the exhibit because I think you'll find something for everyone there.